Dr. Jitendra Singh, firstly, congratulations, and uh, you're very lucid in your explanations, and you've laid out uh, what India could do, uh, particularly the game changer that you talked about that Prime Minister Modi has brought about by opening out space. Uh, now that Chandrayaan is, uh, you know, a success, its major mission of landing on the moon has happened, the rover's out there, and most likely everything will go well. We, uh, we, uh, so far, everything seems good. Where do you see uh, the uh, program going from here? India joined the Artemis program to, uh, to be part of 27 nations along with the U.S. to explore, bring humans back uh, to the moon. Where does India's contribution go from here? What do you see as the next uh, couple of steps that ISRO or India will be taking and that you would be overseeing? I think to put it briefly, what is important is that from being merely uh, 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 an aspirant in the space missions, India today is an equal partner. And no longer is India looked at as a nation which looks forward to collaborating with the other countries of the so-called developed nations. It is the other way around now. Now, you mentioned Artemis. It was at the behest of America during Prime Minister Modi's Washington DC visit that this finalized. During the same visit, it was America which solicited Indian astronauts to join them in their future mission to the space station. So what I'm trying to say is that now India is firmly placed as a frontline nation, particularly in the space sector. And the other countries who are into the space sector venture are looking up to India as in not only as an equal partner, but also sometimes in cues for clues, which maybe was not so a few years earlier. And that applies to Chandrayaan 3 as well. Secondly, overall, this has uh, given India kind of a credibility and uh, also proved beyond evidence India's capacity to give a lead in certain areas, uh, which might not have been explored by the other nations. Overall, in the, in the, in the, in the arena of science and technology, and uh, maybe spearheaded by space uh, sector. And therefore, when Prime Minister speaks about 25 years ahead, in the Amrit Kaal, when India would rise to the pedestal, I think that ascent of India has okay. begun via space. So, so give us a space map. A very serious... Uh, uh, collaborator, partner, or uh, even uh, a leader uh, in these spheres, which was not so earlier. And one other aspect of India, as far as the space technology alone is concerned, per se is concerned, is that we are no longer confined only to the launching of rockets. We have yes. also proved ourselves capable of using space technology in the infrastructure development to bring ease of living for the common man. In India, for example, space technology has entered every Indian household. It is every sector, where it's the railway crossings, uh, unmanned crossings, where it's the railway tracks, laying where it's the uh, smart cities, where it's the roads and bridges, where it's the telemedicine, where there's a Swamito program, it's a very ambitious program for the mapping of, uh, we have a new geospatial policy. And it's all happened in the last few years, ever since uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, very pragmatically took up uh, the resolve to open up the space sector to oh, all the navigation. other navigation. You're absolutely right, sir. If I may, sir, give us a space map, a, a roadmap of what next. Aditya, the solar exploration, what do you hope to achieve with that, with Gaganyaan, uh, with... Are you also, you know, do you have a roadmap or, or a space map or when do we put a manned mission, not just in space, but in moon, sir? No, I'm glad, uh, Gaurav, you asked that. We certainly follow a roadmap. And we are very organized in the space sector. I think one of the special features is in the space department, nobody super -invades. You would have seen today all the former chairmen, all the former scientists putting their heads together yes. and being there, you know, when required. So every mission is like a family mission for them. This is a lifetime commitment. So as far as our next mission is concerned, I think the most important ambitious mission in the world we look up to it is the Gaganyaan mission. It got delayed by two or three years, unfortunately, because of the COVID. When the lockdown happened, some of our uh, astronauts were going undergoing a training stint in the Gregory Center at Bosco. They had to be called back. And therefore, the entire thing, you know, uh, went back by over three years. Now it's on the track. So before 
we actually send a human being into the space. Of course, we had a human being in the space in the form of Rakesh Sharma, Rakesh Sharma, Sharma yeah. uh, about uh, 40 years back, but that was a Soviet uh, mission. This is going to be a purely indigenous human mission called Gagarin. But before we actually send a human person, a human Indian life and soul into that mission, we are going to make ourselves sure that just as it is a, it's important to send a human being into a space, it's equally important to have him back safe and sound. Oh, so for that, we are going to have two preliminary trial missions. Hopefully, I, I, because we were all busy with Chandrayaan, I think tomorrow or day after we'll get back to the uh, our department and try to figure it out if we can do it the first such mission in next month itself, September or so. So we'll have the first non-human mission. We will go up for a few hours, follow the same itinerary as the actual mission, then get back into the waters, and then it is rescued. That's a, that's a collaborative uh, function where the Navy comes into play, where the Coastal Guard comes into play. If we are successful, uh, we are satisfied. Then we'll have another mission, maybe by the beginning of the next year, where we'll put in a, a, a human being without a soul. That is a robo-human being. So we already decided we'll have a female robo this time, who will be known as Vyomitra. So this Vyomitra robo, she will function like the human being. She'll perform all those functions there in the space, in the Gaganyar. And when it comes back, she'll come back through the same route through the waters or whatever, she'll be rescued in the same manner with all the safety uh, considerations and parameters being observed. Uh, and after that, when we are fully satisfied that we have been able to actually deliver the manner that we had envisaged for ourselves, then maybe by the second half of next year or so, we'll send an actual human being, one or two or more than one of them, into the space. And, and that will is, be a landmark even for it. And this again and is an indigenous course. program. <laughs> India's own effort uh, from this point on, Gaganyan, the Vayu Mitra first, and then Gaganyan sending a man mission or a human mission, man or woman, to space, Dr. Jitendra Singh. Absolutely, absolutely. This is going to be a human mission. And, and that will pave the way for the rest of our missions which are in line, whether the space station, whether the Aditya, as far as the solar mission is concerned, etc., etc. Uh, okay, uh, Rajchengapa has another question for you on Gaganyan, I presume. Go, go ahead, uh, uh, Raj, please. Uh, no, apart from Gaganyan, uh, you also have a roadmap to study the sun. Aditya is going up. What else do you have? I mean, and what is the significance of Aditya as you see it? No, absolutely, because uh, th this is a relatively undiscovered uh, zone as far as the, the solar zone and the sun is concerned. But uh, we always move from one level to the other. So I think, and also we tend to learn from uh, one mission and then put our experience into practice in the next, in the succeeding mission. As we did so even today, Chandrayaan 3, learning from uh, what we had experienced during Chandrayaan 2. So we had a different design, a different structure, even the software was different, even the even the sensors and the cameras which are there at Vikram and we lose contact from the Earth station and then it takes a decision on its own. We're also highly sophisticated compared to earlier. So when we move on, uh, as you said, for the other missions, we would also take a call according to the experience or the capabilities that we have gained from the past uh, or the immediate past mission. But what I'm confident about is, like most of the others in different today, is that we are in no way lesser place than other nations who had launched themselves into this space much before us. So that's something very hard thing. Sir, before we On let the contrary, you go, many of I our know, graduates will... Yes, I know you have another meeting, sir. But, you know, what would you say to those, those in the West who may be criticizing India that, you know, do we have the funds... Uh, to to uh, you know to to spend on space exploration because there are some who who are crying over you know for them it, it may be sour grapes they haven't been able to do it oh. and they're saying why is India doing it uh, do we have the money? Yeah, I think Gaurav, I need to respond to that because a because those who say so either say so because without going into the facts b because they say so out of certain prejudice or bias. You will appreciate when I tell you that the whole Chandrayaan 3 mission has cost us just about 600 crore. 
just about 600 crore. Amazing. The Gaganyaan mission just cost about 10,000 crore. This is just a fraction of each of the missions that is spent by Americans or the Russia. The Russian mission, which is just now failed, was about 16,000 crore. Many more times than us. And that is possible because we have over the years mastered the art of making an optimum combination of our human resource with the other resources to make it a cost effective. Now, when we went in Chandrayaan 3, we spent about one month because we were negotiating with the natural forces. We were moving, we were rotating around the earth. We took about 20 circles and gradually moved out of the earth, then moved into the gravity zone of uh, uh, the moon, took about 75 to 80 circles, then moved out. Whereas the Russian mission took us, you know, like a bullet train because it didn't have to, because speed was so high, and so also they caused, they didn't have to face the gravity, they didn't take gravity uh, forces into cognizance and uh, spend a huge lot of amount. We have now uh, been able to learn the skill of making an optimum mix of those. And as I said, when we accomplish a mission like Chandrayaan 3, we are able to tell the world, look here, we are now equally placed or better placed to you according to your, according to the parameters decided by you, the global benchmarks, the global parameters. But at the same time, we are also using space technology for infrastructural and for citizen benefit programs, unlike you. So I think our space technology program is a very widespread, comprehensive, versatile uh, program. Our missions are, on the one hand, of course, missions meant to uh, meant to address certain objectives related to the uh, research into the mysteries of the universe, at the same time to establish our capabilities before the rest of the world.